Hello everyone. Today I'm preparing a revision video for the final. Let's share the screen and start it. Uh, the first topic of final include the benefit or utility. I use both of them. I take my laser pointer. We can measure utility or benefit in two ways. The first way is cardinal utility approach. And the second one is ordinal utility approach. I'm not going to give the whole detail about it, but I'm going to give a summary of the details. <laughs> the main feature of cardinal utility said that they measured utility numerically. Okay. They get benefit or utility. And they believe that we can calculate that utility numerically. And in the ordinal utility, they do not measure numerically. Rather than they, they use comparison and ranking. Maybe you remember I gave the example of desert ranking, baklava and sütlaç. These are the difference. So the cardinal approach measure numerically for utility, ordinal utility not calculate numerically. They rather than they use comparison and ranking. Then we talked about the properties of indifference curve. Indifference curve do not intersect. Second one is indifference curves are negatively sloped. And the last feature is indifference curves are mostly or usually convex to origin. Then we talk about that shape. These are the indifference curve. Sorry, I'm going to write something. For example, if I ask, please rank the uh, utility level of, <coughs> of the point. So point A, the uttermost, give the highest utility. And in the lecture, as I said before, in the same indifference curve, we get the same utility. So the C, B, and D give the same utility. And point E give the few utility. OK? In normal, without looking your income, we always try to get to maximize our utility. So the point A give the maximum utility. So uh, without money, we choose A. You also see over there. But in real life, there are some restrictions over there and the main restrictions are price and income. So if you don't have money, how can we get it? So for choosing which point by looking the money, we always look the restrictions of budget. That's why we come to the budget equation. Let's assume that we have a two goods, X and Y. And <coughs> the condition or assumption set, these are, the first one is our spending of good X. And the second one is spending of Y. And the assumption set, our, assumption, our expenditure on X and Y 
give our budget. We only pay our money to X and Y goods. That's why expenditure on X and Y give the budget. And the assumption said, we have to pay our whole budget and we don't get any money. In previous slides, I said we choose A. But I said in real life, the budget restrictions over there. This is the budget line. That budget line, draw it using that equation. <coughs> so, which points can you select? The tangent point of budget line and indifference curve. So, you see over there, the point B is the tangent point of budget line and indifference curve. That point called consumer equilibrium and they that give the highest or maximum utility. And at that point, marginal rate of substitution and slope of budget line are the equal. So the maximum utility condition is that we can change the form of marginal equilibrium condition to that way. Marginal utility divide price of X equal to marginal utility Y divided price of Y. Okay. That I'm also right over here. The consumer equilibrium condition is that this is the equality condition. But uh, you know, I'm gonna give table uh, and give income, and I said. How many goods can we get to maximize our utility? For getting or for finding the answer, we don't use the consumer equilibrium. Rather, we use the marginal utility per dollar rule. Sorry about it. So there are three conditions is occur. occur. Let's assume that we have a two goods X and Y. Which goods can we choose if marginal utility per price for X greater than Y? We choose X or the Y part is greater than X. We choose Y. If the equality condition can occur, that means that we get the same utility per dollar. That's why there's an equality over here. We choose the cheaper one. Okay. Okay, then let's talk about the example. Before that, I'm going to give the, maybe you want to see the marginal utility formula. As I said before, I'm not going to give the everything. When you see marginal, you put delta in both sides. And that is the total utility. Delta total utility divided delta quantity. Marginal means additional. So every additional units, how much utility change in total utility. Okay. Okay, then let's talk about the example. Let's assume that we have a two goods, apple and orange. In the first column, I give the number of product quantity. In the second column, I give the total utility, third marginal utility. And the last column, I give the marginal utility 
per price. For the apple price is one, for the orange price is two. <clears throat> and one more thing. If or when quantity is zero, at that level, there is no marginal utility. Okay. And I forget about it. It's wrong. When quantity is zero, total utility is zero. If you don't consume anything, you don't get any total utility. So zero is true for the total utility. So the, these points are denoted zero. And I said there is no marginal utility over there. I give the price of apple for the orange. And let's take the laser pointer. I said marginal utility means change in total utility divided change in quantity. So when we eat one, one apple, or one more apple, it changes 10 divided 1. How can I find it like that? 10. I'm not going to write everything in all steps, but in the first one, I'm going to write it. 10 minus 0 divided 1 minus 1. I one minus zero, sorry. Okay, we find it like that. But one more point. You see the quantity always change one. So we divide quantity one. So one divided one cannot effect the answer so we are able to look at the answer so we can change the total utility 10 8 9 10 11 12 13 okay and I said the price of apple is 1. So 10 divided 1, 8 divided 1 is like that. But before that, let's do the, the, that part. Again, you see the quantity changes is always 1. So we, we are able to just look at the changes of total utility. <laughs> 24, 20, 18. 16, 12, 6, and 4. Then let's look marginal utility per dollar rule part. For the apple 1, for the orange 2, 10 divided 1, 10, 8, 7, it's going like that. And we divide marginal utility 2, 24 divided 2, 12, 10. 9, 8, 6, 3, and 2. The first part of the story is filling out the table. And let's come to the question part. This time, you remember the rule of the marginal utility per price rule. We compare the marginal utility per price. So we co we are going to compare the that part. I'm gonna change the color. So we compare the last column. <laughs> and the question need to give some budget or income. Let's assume that budget is ten. What can we get the first? The first of the first higher option. If we get one orange, we get twelve. I'm gonna show with the laser. 
if we you get one orange we get 12 if we get one apple 10 which one is greater exactly orange so our first selection is orange when we get orange orange is two turkish lira we pay two turkish lira so eight turkish lira left then we keep going but we consume the first apple we can follow the second one okay but we are still do not consume any apple so if we use one apple we get 10 if we use one orange we get 10 10 to 10 equality in the equality condition we get the which one cheaper one cheaper one is apple so we get the apple and apple is one turkish lira so seven turkish lira left then move on if we get one more apple eight eight to ten we get ten we get ten because of the greater number so we pay two more turkish lira we have five turkish lira left then if we use one more apple eight eight to nine still orange is the winner so the fourth selection is orange we pay two more turkish lira left and three turkish lira more <laughs> then eight to eight we choose the cheaper one in equality condition so apple we pay one turkish lira so two turkish lira more then seven to eight again orange give the higher number so we consume the orange and there is no money left so how many units can for the apple two apple and four orange give our utility maximizing condition or consumer equilibrium how can we show on the graph firstly you you should draw the budget line in the question I'm going to show again. Income is 10. Apple is 1. Orange is 2 Turkish lira. If we pay all income or all budget to Apple, how many we get? 10 divided 1. So 10 Apple. And how many can we get the maximum for the orange? 10 divided 2, 5. And this, this is the budget line. If you don't remember how can I make this, please uh, going back to the real slides of the lecture. And what can I say? The equilibrium condition give the highest maximum utility. And we find the answer two apple, four orange, and we denote on over there. And I said before, the tangent point of budget line and the indifference curve give the consumer equilibrium. Okay. This is the first part. Let's come to the cost. Mostly we talk about the short term cost. The difference between short term and long term is or are short term less than one year and long term more than one year and it's up mostly one to five years. The first formula is total cost equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Total fixed cost is does does not depend on the production. It's a fixed. If you don't, if you make one million production or zero production, it doesn't matter. You have to pay that amount. It's like a rental cost. But when we talk about the total variable or ver variable total variable cost it's depend on the 
level of production and level of production mostly depend on the level of labor so if you produce more that become more higher but total fix fixed cost is fixed or constant okay when we divide all equation into quantity we are able to find the average so when we divide total cost divided quantity we find the average total cost when we divide total fixed cost divide quantity we find average fixed cost and when we divide total variable cost to quantity we find the average variable cost So we can denote like that. And please, you should memorize these formulas. <laughs> and marginal cost. In previous slide, I said marginal utility. What can I say? When you see marginal, that means additional. When you see M, you put delta over there and we put t on the first side t and get the another letter tc delta total cost divided delta quantity and in the first formula i said total fixed cost is fixed so if we change total variable cost that change exactly occur on the total cost because this is R the fixed so these two formulas give the same number in the short term or short term or short run so average total cost equal to total cost divided quantity so we are also right in that way total cost equal to average total cost multiply quantity. We can put quantity on the other side. These are true for the total variable cost. Average variable cost multiply quantity. Also, that is true for the average fixed cost, but I'm not going to write it or write it down average fixed cost equal to total fixed cost divided quantity it is equal to total fixed costs average fixed cost multiply quantity okay so there are too many formulas or total fixed cost equal to total cost minus total variable cost it's up to you and normally profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost and we remember total revenue is equal to price multiply quantity and total cost, average total cost multiply quantity as you get over here. So we are able to get the parentheses of quantity. So profit formula turn into the price minus average total cost multiply quantity. So this part is important for memorizing. I give time for writing. Sorry for this. Okay. And I'm going to make multiple choice exam. So you are not going to draw the these graphs, but Maybe you should remember the some features. 
the range between average total cost and average variable cost. First, let's start with gray, greater, then it becomes smaller. The, the range comes from the shape of the average total cost. So as you see over there, that amount is equal to that amount and or that amount equal to that amount. Okay. And one more thing, the marginal cost curve is look like the shape of Nike. Go through to the minimum point of average variable cost and minimum point of average total cost. <laughs> okay, let's talk about, sorry, I have a problem on my voice. Let's talk about markets and start with the perfect competition. And I remember I forget to some topics or I'm not gonna, I'm not include on some topics over there, but it's my problem because I said uh, this video is contain the topics of final. So I think I forget the topic of, um, again, the details of total cost. So I'm not going to ask it. So you are responsible for these slides. And it's a good thing to you. Okay, let's look at the features of, I said features are the important. Perfect competition market. In perfect competition market, there are many buyers and sellers in the market. So neither buyers or sellers can influence the price. So the sellers get the market price. So price determine in market. So there is no firms can able to influence the price. So firms are the price taker. And in perfect competition market, each firm produce and sells identical product or homogeneous product. Firms enter and exit market easily and buyers and sellers have perfect information. So there is no cheat on the market. I said firms are price taker. They cannot influence the price. Price determined in the market where the intersection point of supply and demand curve. The firms <laughs> have to get that price. So that price is the demand curve of the firm. The so demand curve is horizontal. That shape is called perfectly elastic. In perfect the elastic, the competition level is too high. If they change the price, the demand goes to zero. Okay. And I am gonna write something over here. I'm not gonna give all detail, but I said in perfect competition market, demand equal to price equal to average revenue equal to marginal revenue. If you gonna learn where it come from, please go into the previous lectures on previous week. I said demand is equal to price, equal to average revenue, equal to marginal revenue. Average revenue, <clears throat> I'm going to give the formula. Average revenue equal to total revenue divided quantity. And 
Marginal Revenue. Is equal to Delta Total Revenue divided Delta Quantity. Okay. And how can we find the profit maximizing level? The rule is that as long as marginal revenue greater than marginal cost, we are still going to the produce it. And when marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, at that point give the profit maximizing level. Or we are able to write price equal to marginal cost. Why is that? I said the profit maximizing level is price equal to marginal, uh, sorry, marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. And in perfect competitive or perfect competition market, these are the same, price equal to marginal revenue. That's why we are able to write in that sense. But I said, in whole market, oligopole, monopole, mon monopolistic competition, we use that one. That is true for every market. This is a different for the marginal perfect competition market. But this is also true for the perfect competition market. So if I'm student, I'm going to try to get that one. But that's also true for perfect competition. Okay, let's assume that that, that example for the perfect competition or perfect competitive market or perfect competitive firm price is 50. At that level, how much will be produced in the short run? Okay, let's do it. I said price is 50, and this is perfect competitive firm table. Firms in perfect competitive is the price taker. They cannot influence the price. So they get the price in the same in all levels. So they get the price in the market. So price is 50. And I said, when quantity is zero, total variable cost is zero. And the first formula is total cost equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. So 30, 130 minus 130, 50, 60, 72, 75, 110, 140, 180, 230, and 290. Okay. Then average variable cost. Total variable cost divided quantity. So undefined the first one. 30 divide 1, 50 divide 2, 60 divide 3, it's going to like that. Okay, average total cost. Average total cost formula, total cost divided quantity. Or average fixed cost plus average variable cost. Please check the previous slides for the formulas and you should memorize it. So 100 divided 0, undefined. 130 divided 1, it's going to like that. Then marginal cost. I said in the zero level, there is no marginal cost. And marginal cost formula is change in total cost divided change in quantity. 
And as you see, quantity changes always one in that question. So we are able to look at the changes of total cost or total variable cost. That give the same results. So 30 difference, 20, 10, 12, 13, 25 at that level, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Okay. And one more condition over there. In the perfect competition, price is equal to marginal revenue. Okay. So, total revenue formula, price multiply quantity. Price is 50, quantity is start with zero. 50 multiply zero, zero. 50 minus one, 50. 50 minus two, 50 minus three, it's going like that. And profit. Total revenue minus total cost or price multiply average total cost multiply quantity. It's up to you. But I think that one is true. Maybe in exam, I'm not going to give the formula of profit, okay? You should memorize it. Zero minus 100 minus 100. 50 minus 130. It's going like that. So where is the answer? I said the profit maximizing condition is in perfect competition market, price equal to marginal cost or in the all market, marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So let's check it. And I what can I say? When marginal revenue greater than marginal cost, we keep going to produce it. You see, the marginal revenue greater than marginal cost. And at that level, we find the equality. So the answer in that row. In that row, you see that we get the highest utility. And in, I get the laser. In that level, the marginal revenue greater than marginal cost. So we keep going to produce it and we find the equality. And at that level, you see the marginal cost become greater than the marginal revenue. So we stop over here at that level, give the highest utility from us or highest profit, sorry. So the quantity is nine. When the quantity is nine, we get the highest profit. Or not gonna say highest profit. We produce at that level. When quantity equal to nine. Because that condition, marginal cost equal to marginal revenue condition, occur at that level. Again, remember. <laughs> I, I give again these details for the graph example. That part is also important. So we use two formula for it, calculating profit, total revenue minus total cost or price minus average total cost multiplied quantity. I said the for the whole market 
that condition is true, marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, give the profit maximizing condition. But just for the perfect competition, that is also true. Marginal cost equal to price because in perfect competition, price equal to marginal revenue. So at that condition, you see over there, profit will be maximum or the loss will be minimum. So profit maximizing condition not give always the highest profit, okay? Maybe in previous slides, I'm gonna say it like that. That show the, at which point, at which point can we produce it? And at condition, show the profit will be maximum or the loss will be minimum. So we are able to find profit by using these formulas, positive, zero, and negative, okay? Okay. I said the imperfect competition market, the market determine the price and firms cannot influence the price because they are the price taker. So they accept the price of market. Let's assume that the market price is 15. And the, that side show the Firms, average total cost, average variable cost curve, and marginal cost curve. And let's assume that price is equal to 15, and that is the demand of the perfect competition market. And we know demand is equal to price, equal to average revenue, equal to marginal revenue. How can we solve it? I'm gonna, I wrote on board for the steps for solving that question. The first step is finding the intersection point of marginal, marginal cost and marginal revenue. That steps true for all examples. As you, you can see over there, that intersection point is over there. Then after finding the intersection point of marginal cost and marginal revenue, Let's draw a direct line. And that direct line on the below part show the quantity. And then find the intersection point of direct line and average total cost. It's over there. That give the average total cost, then find the intersection point of direct line and average variable cost, that point. So you know how can I ask that question? Maybe I ask the total revenue, total cost, average total cost, average variable cost, total fixed cost, total variable cost, it's like that, okay? If you missed that lecture, please take notes from your friends. And we can able to use price minus average total cost multiply quantity to give the profit. So that area give the profit. I'm gonna draw like that. That part is profit. Let's talk about the break even. Break even means that profit is equal to zero. So let's assume that this time price determined at seven. And you see that demand line is on the minimum point of ATC. How can we solve it? 
first we find the marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, that part. Then we draw the direct line. Below part show the quantity. <coughs> then we find the intersection point of direct line and average total cost. Again, that point. So that give also the average total cost. Then we find the intersection point of direct line and average variable cost. That part give the average variable cost. So price equal to ATC. So that's why profit is equal to zero. And let's talk about the profit is equal to negative. That is the example of that. First, we find the marginal cost and marginal revenue intersection. So then, then the, draw the direct line. The below part show the quantity. Intersection point of direct line at average total cost give the average total cost. Intersection point of direct line at average variable cost give the average variable cost. Then we are able to calculate profit. Or I'm going to ask total revenue. Total cost, total fixed cost, total variable cost, and average fixed cost, average total cost, average variable cost. Okay, I'm going to ask everything. So if you don't get it, please take your notes from your friends. And one more thing, in your exam, maybe, I'm not going to give the, how can I ask it? I'm not going to say this is ABC, this is price. I'm going to ask in that sense, for example. This is seven. I give a more a line over here. Okay. Then you find the which number denoted average total cost or average variable cost or price. Okay. That's why I say that if you don't get the notes of the lecture, please take it. This is just the revision, not to include the whole thing. And the minimum point of average total cost, when price equal to draw on there, this is the break even. In the break even, price is equal to zero. And this is the shutdown point. If we move below the shutdown point, we are going to close it down. So when price greater than average total cost, greater than average variable cost, we get positive profit and we are going to keep on production. When average total cost greater than price greater than average variable cost we get negative profit but we are still continued production because we cover some fixed cost and variable cost we are cover tot total fixed cost and some cover total variable cost, but I'm 
I'm going to write over here. When average total cost greater, greater than average variable cost greater than price, we get negative profit. But this time, we can close it down our firms because we cannot cover total fixed cost and total variable cost. So exit the firm, exit the market. And in the long run, in perfect competition, profit converge to the zero, okay? Okay, let's talk about the features of Monopoly. As I said before, I'm just gonna give the re revision, not the detail. Maybe you can check, check the details, all the de whole details. Monopoly means one. So in monopoly market, there is only one seller in the market. A product has no close substitute. There are some barriers to market entry. The seller says the power to set the price. You should memorize it. In perfect competition, firms are price taker, but this time the monopoly firm a huge power. That's why they able to determine the price. So that's called price maker. But that doesn't mean that they can determine any price because of the law of demand. If they increase the price, the quantity demand become low. But they get the price maker feature because there is no competition over the, there. Normally, the assumption give power to the determine any price. And that power come from the barriers entering for the monopoly market. Let's talk about the barriers entry. The first one is scale effect. The second one is legal constraints. The third, third one is investment costs. Then network effect. Input ownership and the last one is. I'm not going to give the detail, but you should look at the details about what they mean. That is the in example of the monopoly demand curve at marginal revenue curve is like that. I'm not going to give the detail, but the, the, the point is that The marginal revenue curve divide into two the scale. And let's talk about that part. I'm not going to write, but I'm going to say. When we move A to B, the total revenue become increased. So there's a negative relationship over there. So from A to B called elastic okay from b the total revenue become maximum so at point b called unit elastic and when we move b to c the price become lower and total revenue become lower the direct relationship so that part is inelastic a to b elastic b Unit elastic and B to C inelastic. Okay. That come from the previous weeks. Okay. I'm also going to check in my mind for saying true. Okay. Let's talk about that part. Let's assume that Maybe I'm going to delete that part or it doesn't matter. How can we solve that question? This is the example for the monopolist. What can I say? First, find the 
marginal revenue and marginal cost, that part. Then <coughs> we draw a direct line. In profit, uh, profit, um, perfect competition market, we said the down part give. I'm gonna draw. Sorry. First, we find that part, then draw the direct line. The bottom part show the quantity. I forget in the first section. Firstly, we find the intersection point on direct line and demand curve, point A. The intersection point of direct line and demand curve give the price. I'm not going to say in perfect competition because the question already give the price. Then let's talk about the that part. Then the, find the intersection point on direct line and average total cost. That part give the average total cost. Okay. Then we are able to calculate everything. Okay. We know the price. We know the average total cost. We are able to calculate the profit or other things. I'm going to give break over here because I have a meeting, but I'm going to continue. Sorry for that. Okay, let's take a small break. Hey. Hello again. I start a different topic, then I return back to our slides. So how can I ask the that graph question? Let's make only one example. I said, please take your friends to your notes, but let's make an example. I'm going to write the steps over here. The first step is finding marginal intersection point of marginal revenue and marginal cost. OK, let's find it. This is marginal revenue and marginal cost. The intersection point of marginal revenue and marginal cost, cost is over there. We find that point. At that point, for finding that point, draw a direct line. And bottom of the direct line, Show quantity. Let's draw it. Direct line. And bottom part show quantity. So 10 is quantity. Okay, let's move. And I said find the intersection point of Direct line and demand. That intersection point show price. Where is the intersection point of direct line and demand? It's over there. Then we move, go to the vertical line and find the price. And I said, I'm also give price over here, but I'm going to show the all steps. Then let's come to the third steps, the intersection point of direct line and ATC. Okay. 
average total cost that show the value of ATC. So the intersection point of direct line and ATC, it's, sorry, it's over there. So ATC is six. Then the fourth step, this time intersection point of direct line and ABC that give the value of average variable cost. So that intersection point is over there. So five is ABC. Okay. Then you are able to find the all answers. I said, maybe I ask the total revenue, price multiplied quantity, maybe total cost, average total cost multiplied quantity, total variable cost, average variable cost multiplied quantity, or total fixed cost. Maybe at that point, you can use that formula, total cost minus total variable cost. Or I'm going to ask profit P minus quant not not quantity sorry P minus average total cost multiplied quantity it's like that okay and one more point the I'm gonna ask maybe can we keep going to produce it or not or shut down. I'm going to give detail in previous slides. Please check it on video. OK, let's return back to again. Our slides. But before that, I'm going to close it. I'm going to share my slides again. OK. OK, the same procedure for the Monopoly, monopoly competition, and other market. Okay, let's do it again. But I'm going to take my pen or pencil. What is the first step? Finding the intersection point of marginal cost and marginal revenue at that point. At that point, let's draw a direct line. The intersection point of direct line and demand curve give price. The intersection point of direct line and ATC give ATC. Normally, the other step finding intersection point of direct line and average variable cost, but in monopoly, we don't talk about the average variable cost. So that's all. Then you are going to solve in previous example. Okay, let's take the laser again and move on. Hmm. For example, in that question, again, okay, let's do it again together. What can we do? First, the intersection point of marginal cost and marginal revenue. Then draw the direct line. The bottom part show quantity. And the second step, 
the intersection point of direct line and demand. It's over there. Give the price. This is price and the third step intersection point of direct line at ABC again at that point you can see over there. So price equal to ABC. So when the price and A ATC ABC not ABC I'm say wrong sorry about it A average total cost when price and average total cost is equal profit is zero. This is the Monopoly market, zero profit. Let's look at the negative profit example. And let's do it again. First finding the intersection point of marginal revenue and marginal cost. Then draw the direct line. It's not look, look like a direct line. The bottom part show the quantity. The intersection point of demand show the price. Intersection point of ATC, show ATC. In your exam, I'm not going to write price and ATC. I give number over there, okay? Okay, let's talk about the long run equilibrium for the monopoly. In, I said in the perfect competition, there's a zero economic profit in the long run. But the monopoly, there is no rival companies over there. And there is a barrier to entry. So monopoly firm go through with their profit. Okay. Let's come to another market, monopoly competition. I said features are important. <clears throat> the first feature is there are many buyers and sellers in the market. Product differentiation is carried out. This time there is no barriers to entry into market and buyers and sellers have limited information. It's looked like a perfect competition market, but there's some difference over here. The first one is the same. There are many buyers and sellers in the market. Same with perfect competition. But in the perfect competition, they produce homogeneous product, but this time product differentiation. And you are able to easily at exit in the market, but this time it's looked like no barriers. Okay, this, this is the same also. There are no barriers. But have limited information. In perfect competition, they get the all information. So these two are different from the perfect competition markets. I said also, the first dif different part is product differentiation because in perfect competition market, they, they uh, produce homogeneous product or identical product. How firms make product differentiation in monopolistic competition market? They may be physically change or diversifying the product. Second, they may change the appearance. Maybe change the sale method or change the place of sale. And maybe change the quality or giving the additional service okay of the product and i said knowledge is limited in perfect competition they get the all information i said these two are different than perfect competition Okay, these are the demand curve of the perfect the competitive monopoly competition and monopoly. I said perfect competitive or perfect competition. It's horizontal, perfect elastic. The reasons behind the perfect the elastic 
is uh, the competition level is too high. They cannot influence the price. Firms are the price taker. That's why the shape is like that. So I may ask the some questions over there. Compare the level of competition level. If the shape is horizontal, the competition level is too high. When it becomes more flat, the competition level becomes lower. So in D1, competition is first, then D2, then D3. So D3 denoted monopoly. In monopoly, one firm, though there is no competition over there. It's not a perfectly inelastic shape because if they 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 not able to change the price what what they want from their uh, looking their profit because if monopoly firm change the price the quantity demanded become low they know this procedure so they cannot determine any price if they able to determine any price the shape is perfectly inelastic okay Perfectly inelastic means you are able to determine any price. Okay, these are the details. Hmm. Okay. Let's make this example and talk about the olig oligopoly, then finish. <coughs> This time, okay, let's start it. Then I ask the question. First, find the intersection point of marginal revenue and marginal cost. Then draw the direct line. This is not a direct line, sorry about it. So bottom parts show the quantity. Then the intersection point of Direct line and demand show the price. So at that point, so price is nine. Then the intersection point of direct line and ATC, it's over there. Show ATC. Then you are able to calculate some questions. Total revenue, total cost, profit. Okay. I'm not going to ask average variable cost and total variable cost because I'm not giving information about it. But the way of solving these kind of questions is like that. Okay, let's come to the last slide. Another. Uh, okay, do it together. First, we find the intersection point of marginal cost and marginal revenue. Then draw the direct line. Then show the bottom part, show the quantity. Sorry. The intersection point of direct line and demand show price second step intersection point of direct line and ATC again at that point show ATC so ATC equal to price so profit is zero okay and another question find the marginal cost and marginal revenue and draw the direct line. The bottom part show quantity. The intersection point of demand show price. Intersection point of ATC show ATC. Then you can calculate the profit or other things. Okay, last slide. 
what is the features of oligopoly market? There are firms with large market share. There is interdependence between firms. There is no single price output behavior. Product may be homogeneous or they able to differentiate it, their products. Okay. I'm gonna close my slides. Or it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you get a high grades on your final. Good luck. Başarılar. Bye bye. So I need to stop the video. Sorry about it.